More than 250,000 Brits live full-time in the Costa del Sol, making it the biggest expat community in the world. Among them, con men, small-time crooks, and some of the biggest British drug dealers and gangsters running their criminal empires. Hey, chef! Hey, hey, get up, get Every summer, they're joined by more than half a million British tourists hungry for the good life in the UK's number one holiday destination. And along with them comes an orgy of booze, dope, and violence. The man fucking hit me. Which raises the police workload by 300%. Costa del Street Crime Tough Calls brings you some of the most difficult incidents faced by the cops of the six biggest resorts. Fighting the British summer invasion. Coming up, drunken Brits get copped Costa style. Spanish armed police explode into action against a gang of suspected UK drug dealers. And for some expats, celebrations have started early. Yeah. I'm Irish. You're Irish? Well, today is not St. Patrick's Day. What's happened to you? Ben Almadena. Every summer, the population of the resort 15 miles west of Malaga rises from a sleepy 40,000 to a banging 400,000. And if that's not enough, on weekends, 1,100 licensed premises attract thousands more young punters from all over the Costa, many of them Brits. Drunken disorder is a big problem here, and it's the job of the Polizia Locale to keep a tight ship. It's Friday, 11 p.m., and officers Vicente Benasco and Jose Duran have just had a report of trouble on one of the most popular club strips in town. There's a big fight in Solima Square. On scene, fellow officers are already cracking down on the troublemakers, a group of drunken Brits. This youth has just learned that there's a big difference between British and Spanish cops. Any resistance to their orders and it's straight out with a baton. Their favourite target, the calves. A hit here avoids a bone fracture, but immediately gives people a dead leg and sends them crashing to the floor. During the hit, the baton snapped into two pieces. With the three youths chased away into the night, it's time to find out what went on. It seems that this British kid from an expat home started the trouble by attacking the three tourists with a pepper spray. So he's coming in. There are a lot of uh, kids, English boys, living here in Spain. And they are always here in uh, Solimar Square, Harbour. They, are, uh, they have no much time to go home. Ben Almadena, the cheapest place on the Costa, has become a popular destination for British single parents and young families. According to the local cops, many of their kids are roaming the streets till five or six in the morning. Hola. Half an hour later, and Sergeant Benasco and Officer Duran are on their way to an urgent call. Two teenage Spaniards are reported to be hitting British tourists with a baseball bat in a hotel car park. Well, we have a call from 112 emergency saying that uh, two guys, uh, underage, possible, uh, probably underage. Vamonos. Sounds like the cops need to get a move on. OK, they are hitting the people who cross by side them in Hotel Los Patos. Traditionally, most fights happen in a small area of the seafront. But as more and more hotels are built, violence is becoming widespread and the cops are increasingly stretched. Hola. On scene, and the police are quick to spot a Spanish teenager shouting at the hotel guests above. Hola. ¿Qué pasa? Although these two youths fit the description of the attackers, they claim they're the victims. But Benasco is not interested in teenage temper tantrums. Unlike the UK, where cops rarely strike suspects, in Spain the odd slapper kick is accepted practice, and Sergeant Benasco takes no lip. 
Conmigo no te puedes enfrentar. Con él sí. Mira cómo tengo la nariz, va pegado. Por la un poquito de sangre en la nariz. The boy still claims he was hit by a British tourist, so the officers go to investigate. The English couple are too afraid to leave their room, but in the lobby, Benasco finds a Spanish family who claim the youths attacked the English and them. The two boys we caught have come here to the hotel with a big stick looking for a fight, and they attacked two foreigners. They also tried to attack this family. Hotel guests then threw water at them from the balconies. The kids then started causing damage to some vehicles. Convinced that the two boys are the troublemakers, Sergeant Benasco tries to trick them into revealing the weapons used in the attack. El chaval extranjero que le ha pegado a su hermano a su amigo lo tenemos localizado. He promises the boys he'll nick the Brits if he can find any evidence. Busca el palo con el que le ha pegado a su amigo. In England, this form of entrapment is not allowed. But in Spain, they use almost any methods necessary. The Spanish youth leads the cop straight to a splintered table leg and a large rock. But with numerous eyewitnesses, Benasco has already made up his mind. Both kids are arrested. Since the introduction of 24-hour drinking in the UK, many people are worried it'll increase the amount of booze-fueled trouble. One argument is that that isn't the case in the rest of Europe. But after kicking out time at 7 a.m. in Ben Almadena, the police have just heard of a big brawl between Spanish locals. On scene, it's clear there's been some serious injuries. And one victim isn't happy about the presence of our cameras and tries to slope off. It seems the fight was between two groups of bar staff working in the nearby marina. Despite the massive police presence, one of the men isn't prepared to let this one go. With all the youths looking ready for round two, it's time for the officers to step in. They're extra concerned as the main aggressor has a glass in his hand. In a situation like this, the UK police would draw on their skills of diplomacy, but in Spain, the cops take a slightly more forceful approach. With things getting out of hand, the Spanish crowd are getting increasingly wound up by the presence of our British camera crew. Suddenly, a thrown bottle just misses our cameraman. As the crew temporarily take cover, the police pull a suspect from the crowd. With the missile thrower under arrest, the police finally look like they're gaining control of the situation. Despite the chaos, it appears that only two youths were directly involved in the fight. But with no one pressing charges, everyone was allowed on their way. Along the coast, on the high-rise package holiday resort of Torre Melinos, it's the end of the shift for local cops Marcos and Manolo. But they've just spotted a woman collapse down a side street. Hola. As Officer Marcos helps her up, he's relieved to see that she hasn't been attacked. It's just a very drunk expat. Hola. In the state she's in, the cops don't want her wandering the streets alone. They try to find out where she lives. No. It's okay. Where do you live? I don't. Just Where do you live? Up there. Do you know your address? No. <laughs> you are very bad. You can be. No, I'm very drunk. I yeah, know. that's why we can take you home. No, I'm okay. Judging by the woman's clothing, she was okay. trying to relieve herself down this dark street, but had a few problems. Come on, we go. It seems the woman needs some looking after, and Marcos decides to walk her home. Yeah. Yes. I'm married. You're what? Irish. You are Irish? Mm. But today is not St. Patrick's Day. What's happened to you? I don't know. 
Every year, plenty of women are attacked on the Costa del Sol, and the drunken Irish woman would be an easy target for rapists and bag snatchers. Well, be careful the step. So don't drink too much because then some bad bad could be here and take your bag. Pardon? The policeman. Yeah, I am a policeman. Is this one? Yeah. Uh. See? Uh. Eventually, they reach her address, but not without one last stumble. My friend. Waiting for the lift, Officer Marcos finds out from the porter it's not the first time the woman has had one too many. Finally, they're on the home straight. But for the local cops, this kind of babysitting for drunks happens up to three times a week. For the woman, it all seems to be a daily routine. Thank you very much. Thank You're welcome. You. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, oh, I hope not. <laughs> it's very usual to find that kind of people. But uh, we have to do this because they don't realize the danger that they, they have because somebody can come and take the bag out or perhaps they hit her. So we prefer to take the people this to home. With Tori Molinos being home to one of the biggest expat communities on the Costa, picking up drunk Brits and Irish people has become a nightly routine for the local cops. Still to come. Spanish and UK police join forces in the war on drugs. Taxi drivers get targeted by a topless temptress. Are you drunk? And this Brit's got a beef with the cops, but why? Put your camera on that. They're walking away, mate. Costa del Sol is not only home to the biggest British expat community in the world, but with more than half a million tourists every summer, it's also the UK's number one holiday destination. And with Brits packing the beaches and flooding the towns, the police work explodes by 300%. Costa del Street Crime Tough Calls brings you some of the most difficult incidents faced by the cops of the six biggest resorts in their battle against the British summer invasion. Coming up, Costa Cops deal with the aftermath of a suspected assault. You have to tell me what happened. And there's a hunt for a suspected bike thief. Separated by only 17 kilometers of sea from Morocco, the Costa del Sol is the main entry point into Europe for cocaine and hash. In 2004, police on the Costa confiscated more than 70 tons of hash. Most of it moved from Morocco across the sea in small speedboats. The hash trade on the Costa del Sol is enormous. It's an enormous industry. You know, we have inflatable boats travelling around across every night from the coast of the Costa del Sol to North Africa to pick up vast amounts of, of, of hash that has been grown in the mountains um, 30, 40 miles inland. With the Moroccan hash trade alone worth more than £6 billion, gangs from all over Britain have moved to the Costa to organise the supply of their home market. And recently, these drug barons have also started to organise the traffic of cocaine, for which Spain once more is the main entry point into Europe. And we have the strong Spanish links to South America, particularly Colombia. You know, the main route of cocaine is Colombia to the West Indies across to northern Spain. Then it travels through Spain by road down to the south. And then it gets redistributed around the whole of Europe. The upmarket resort of Marbella is Gangland Central. And the organized crime unit of the National Police Station in town is one of the busiest hit squads in Europe. Its highly trained elite officers have become so successful in tracking down criminals, they've been nicknamed Marbella Vice. Dealing mainly with armed gangsters, the squad does not give access to TV cameras, but this exclusive footage documents one of their latest summer strikes. After being tipped off by UK police, armed officers in a series of simultaneous raids stormed the flats of 13 suspected British drug dealers and money launderers. 
one of the bigger operations was against um, a um, gang of British Asians which led to the arrest of several people who were operating from the Costa del Sol with strong links to, to Britain. In raids like these, officers take no chances and ambush the men in their beds with drawn guns. Altogether, seven men were arrested. Some of them are allegedly linked to gangland killings in the Netherlands. And a thorough search of the flat uncovers an arsenal of weapons like automatic and semi-automatic guns. Investigations are still ongoing, but the police so far suspect that the gang made over £30 million by smuggling cocaine and marijuana into the UK, then laundered their profits by investing in property in the Costa. Property is the classic money laundering source now, if you want to call it that. You turn up a, a, an estate agent wanting to buy a certain apartment for 300,000 euros and you slap the money down in cash. According to unofficial estimates, more than 30% of the hotels and holiday homes built on the Costa del Sol were initially funded by drugs money. Everything relies on the black economy in southern Spain. And without the criminals and the money that they're bringing in, it's often said that the entire economy of Andalusia would just collapse. Ben Almadena, 2 a.m. And on one of the club strips, police are challenged by an irate Brit. I'm missing this president. She's going to ring me tonight. Bang. She's got my phone. And I can't get my phone back. And there's fucking six or seven of these stood here. Stood here. And he stood with my phone. There's something not really right here. This expat claims that someone stole his mobile during a brawl and disappeared into a nightclub. Unsurprisingly, the bouncers won't let him in to challenge the thief, so he wants the cops to start a major operation, but they're hesitant. I watched him pick it up and walk in that fucking pub. The bouncer, give me that. Yes. Although the man claims to know who stole his phone, he's not giving any descriptions and he's steaming drunk. So the cops refuse to do anything until he's filed a complaint at the station. It's petrol on the fire. My phone is gone. I have watched the person pick it up, the bouncer, if that's what you want to call it, pick it up, and now I have got six or seven coppers around me that will not walk into that pub and go and take it off it. I cannot now contact my missus. I cannot now contact my fucking mother. But I'm going on a bit. Fed up with his tirades, the cops decide to walk oh, off, shit. leaving You're this irate Yorkshireman with no target for his rants other than our Spanish no, researcher. Honestly, mate, put your camera on that. They're walking away, mate. They're six, seven coppers walking away. That's your country. I'm not being rude here. That's your country. There's your club. An English copper now, I'm not being real now, an English copper now would at least have had enough parts about him to stand at that door and ask that bouncer to produce a phone. The bouncer wanted to produce it, I would have been shitless. The difference is, he would have fucking walked up there and asked. Him. No, 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 get a, get a long zoom on, mate. Get a long zoom on. They're all walking away. That's seven, six, seven. Finally, this amateur Spielberg runs out of steam and our crew can escape to the police car. Uh, nobody. We only said that someone had just robbed her mobile phone, but he didn't where, when, and anything. We can, we, can, we can do anything because he didn't say exactly nothing. We, we can help if he say that that person, he has just my mobile phone. The police uh, can can do anything, but in the middle of the road, one person drunk is is too easy. So far, the man hasn't turned up at the station to file a complaint. Another shift, and officers Benasco and Duran have just received a report of a woman in trouble. The security of uh, they found a woman out in the street with serious injuries. Less than a minute later, the cops are on scene. Hola, buenas noches. ¿Qué tal? I don't speak Spanish. English? Yes. What happened? She's got cuts and bruises on her face, her clothes are bloodstained, and she's very distressed. No, please take me to the hospital. We are waiting for the ambulance, okay? Yes. But you, you have to tell me what happened. No. Your, your mother? 
Yeah. Benasco suspects she's the victim of an extremely vicious domestic assault. And with 50 women murdered by their partners every year, Spanish police take this very seriously. Just take me to the hospital. Yes, an ambulance is coming here. Yes. Why? She doesn't want to talk to the police. All she wants is an ambulance to take her and her son to hospital. We are waiting for the ambulance, OK? Yes. Come on, come down and, and tell me what happened. Your husband? Yes? Let me see your face. How did you get that? I fell. You fell? Sure. Mom. He speaks fluently Spanish. Yes. And he can say whatever he wants, you know? Yeah. So I will always lose? No, you're not lose. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. You have the Spanish law all to you. After a quick check, the paramedics fear that her head injuries are worse than they appear. The woman is taken to hospital for a more thorough assessment. It looks like she suffered a severe beating, and Benasco is now absolutely determined to find out from her son who's responsible. Your father is at home now, yeah? No. He's alone then. Or with friends. I don't want to talk. Yeah, but we have to go to your house. And we want to know if he's alone or with friends or whatever. But he is as traumatized as his mother. Although the woman doesn't want to press charges, Benasco decides to confront her partner. Unlike the British police, who most of the time only follow up official complaints, Spanish cops have been encouraged to take a proactive approach and can make an arrest based on the evidence at hand. Hola, buenas noches. ¿Qué tal? It's her partner. According to him, he's innocent, and her injuries are her own fault. Uh -huh. But the cops aren't convinced. The woman looks to them far too traumatized to be the victim of an accident. He's detained and will be questioned at the station. When we arrived, she was... Uh confused and the woman uh, always say that nothing's happened uh, she don't uh, she doesn't want to uh, make complaints to his partner now he is in uh, the police station and probably we will detain him after receiving treatment to her facial injuries the woman was released from hospital the next day inquiries into the case are still ongoing Still to come, the cops put the brakes on this moped mania. She's flirting with the wrong copper. <laughs> you know, she tried to put the boobs, you know, a little bit high. She's like a, hi, sir. And this woman goes for a suntan at midnight, but just gets a grilling from the cops. Are you drunk? All in one single pod. New Aerial 3-in-1 pods. All you need. The Costa del Sol is not only home to the biggest British expat community in the world, but with more than half a million tourists every summer, it's also the UK's number one holiday destination. And with Brits packing the beaches and flooding the towns, the police work explodes by 300%. Costa del Street Crime Tough Calls brings you some of the most difficult incidents faced by the cops of the six biggest resorts in their battle against the British summer invasion. Coming up, a late night scuffle at the kebab shop. A British girl gets an extra portion Costa Cop style. And taxi drivers get targeted by a topless temptress. Are you drunk? Back in the cheap package resort of Fuengirola, it's 1 a.m. Officers Manolo and Mariano have just seen a speeding scooter heading for Ben Almadena. Suddenly, the rider does a U-turn at a roundabout and comes straight back on the opposite side of the road. But the cops can't cross the central reservation in their patrol car, so Mariano tries to cut him off by foot. No chance. The scooter roars past and leaves him for dust on the side of the road. Time to put out a full alert. 
y va sin luces, una cute. The cops suspect it's a stolen bike, the tool of choice for many muggers when snatching handbags from tourists. Up ahead, another patrol car is now chasing the bike down a beach road. Manolo and Mariano chase to catch up. To prevent accidents, in the UK, police are supposed to hold back. But here, the second patrol car is right behind the scooter and starts to push him hard. It seems he's leading them into a rough part of town. The officers now think of a new plan. Head right and circle round to cut off his escape route. Unfortunately, they didn't plan on another moped getting in their way. Finally, the hapless rider moves out of their way, but they've lost valuable minutes. They've got to floor it now to get into position. With the scooter's top speed at 50 miles an hour, the rider could have easily escaped by now. If their tactics are correct, the scooter rider should exit onto this street, ready to be cut off by Manolo and Mariano. The scooter shoots towards them, but again the central reservation is in their way. Now Mariano is really wound up. Nobody gets away from him twice. They need to swing the car round quick and pick up the chase. But suddenly, they spotted their man. He's just dumped the scooter and now tries to leg it. Manolo drops his baton and stops to retrieve it. Now it's Mariano's chance finally to get his man. He's caught up with the suspect who's running on the pavement, but he can't get through to him because of the parked cars. The suspect is now in an alley, but the cop quickly makes up the distance. They've got him, and it's time to show him who's the boss with their batons. The arrest has caused quite a scene, and a crowd of people come to watch. They've got their man, but now realize they're missing the evidence. No one seems to know where the moped is, and the suspected thief's not going to help them. The bike's disappeared, but Mariano has a theory about where it is. We're looking for the moped, but we think that some of his mates hid it while we were catching him. It seems the bike rider knew what he was doing when he headed for this part of town. Large groups of youths seem to be everywhere, and the cops suspect that at least one of them got rid of the evidence. As we don't have the moped, we can't charge him for robbery of a motorized vehicle. We can only arrest him for ignoring police orders. It's bad luck. He knew where to go. It's his neighborhood. I don't know if you notice all the youngsters around are his friends. They took the vehicle away. The man was eventually charged with ignoring police orders and received a fine of 500 euros. If they'd found the bike, he'd have been looking at a prison sentence of six months. Back in Ben Almadena, Officer Duran has called into a local kebab shop. Being a cop, he doesn't have time to queue, but his VIP treatment isn't going down well with two multilingual Brits who get abusive. Sensing that things could get out of hand, Duran radios his partner, Sergeant Benasco, who's parked up nearby. And with 15 cops patrolling the main strip, it's not long before more move in to help out. The youths are quickly separated and the mouthy one in white gets a thorough grilling. 
He's quick to realize it's a big mistake to come between a cop and his kebab. Unlike the UK, carrying ID is the law in Spain, as is being polite to police officers. The second youth hasn't quite got this message either and is unhappy about Sergeant Benasco confiscating his whiskey. Officer Parejo is quick to react, but several British girls make the big mistake of getting involved. With an unexpected clip around the ear, the girl in the blue skirt has just been taught a hard Spanish lesson. It appears that after the male youth was pushed, she slapped Officer Parejo on the arm. In the UK, teenagers might be used to getting away with this kind of disrespectful behaviour, but in Spain, nobody can touch a cop. And for this girl, the long arm of the law provides instant punishment. But with the youths left to argue amongst themselves, officers Benasco and Duran can finally concentrate on their kebabs. Officers Pinerdo and Hermida have just been signalled by a taxi to pull over. Hola. Pecado, seguramente sí. Delito ya. The cab driver has just been flashed by a woman at the side of the road. Although flashing your breasts isn't technically indecent exposure, it certainly will get a lot of attention. The cops are worried that she might be slightly disturbed. As the officers start their search, it quickly becomes clear that there's been quite a few victims. Hola. Una mujer rubia, vestida de negro. Está ahí. Eso es. Gracias. The cops struggle to keep a straight face. Serial flashers aren't everyday fare, especially female ones who specialize in cab drivers. Victor Dos, la tenéis ubicada. Suddenly, they spot someone walking along the side of the road. Vale. It's the woman, and they've caught her in the act. But she realizes she's been flashing the cops, not taxi drivers, and she gets shy and covers up. The woman doesn't seem to speak Spanish and looks very confused. Are you drunk? It turns out she's a Ukrainian living in Benalmadena. Over the last few years, the Costa has attracted many people from Eastern Europe, making them one of the fastest growing communities here. But the cops aren't convinced that the climate of the Costa justifies this sort of late night flashing session and decide to cool her down by taking her to hospital. But the woman isn't impressed. She wants to slope off. Under Spanish law, mentally ill people can't be arrested and prosecuted. However, police can take them against their will to a psychiatrist. The woman seems to comply at first, but as the officers try to get her into the patrol car, she starts to resist. The cops suspect she might be an illegal immigrant. They decide to play hardball. Bizarrely, deportation doesn't worry the woman as much as a trip to the doctors, and she starts desperately resisting the attempts of the officers to get her into the car by taking a bite out of one of them. And it doesn't stop there. The woman is screaming for help in Spanish and desperately wedging the door open with her feet. The woman is now keeping four cops busy trying to push and pull her into the car, but they still only manage to close one door, so one of the officers has the unfortunate job of staying with her in the back and making sure she won't jump out during the drive. But with the door open, the cops can't do much more than 15 miles an hour. It's going to be a long ride to the health centre. Yes, she tried to bite me, here on the arm. She didn't put her teeth in, but she tried to. She really tried. 
A medical check by the doctor didn't reveal any signs of mental illness, but it turned out the woman was an illegal immigrant, so she's currently facing deportation procedures. Still to come, a girl's gone missing and her dad fears the worst. This woman's flirting with the wrong copper. Nice karaoke, <laughs> You know, she tried to put the boobs, you know, a little bit high. It's like a, hi, sir. And coming quietly, Costa style. Puta, joder. Costa del Sol is not only home to the biggest British expat community in the world, but with more than half a million tourists every summer, it's also the UK's number one holiday destination. And with Brits packing the beaches and flooding the towns, the police work explodes by 300%. Costa del Street Crime Tough Calls brings you some of the most difficult incidents faced by the cops of the six biggest resorts in their battle against the British summer invasion. Open your eyes. Good morning. Still to come, Costa Cops crack down on domestic violence. And a man loses his daughter and his mind. <laughs> Torre Melinos officers Marco and Francisco are on their way to help two plainclothes cops who've spotted a Moroccan man beating up his girlfriend. They now struggle to arrest him. But the woman isn't pleased with all the sudden attention. <laughs> a metre away, the cops tackle the suspected wife-beater to the ground, but they have to be extra careful as he's carrying a knife. But despite this and the fact that just moments ago he was beating her, the girlfriend is furious at the cops' intervention. She's determined to stand by her man. <laughs> <laughs> While dropping to the floor, the man loses his knife, but the cops are still struggling to slap on the cuffs. <laughs> Finally, the cuffs are on. It's time to get the man into the squad car. A tough task. The prisoner keeps resisting, so the officers go for a vice-like headlock. British police have become wary of such techniques, as there's a danger of neck injuries or suffocation. But these two lovers are determined to be reunited. The man is desperate to get back to his girlfriend, but the police are having none of it. According to the plainclothes cops, only a minute ago he was beating her up. With the arrested man safe in the car, the cops can pick up the blade, a 15-inch carving knife. <laughs> but the woman's more concerned with trying to find out who grasped up her boyfriend. <laughs> the undercover cop spotted the man punching his girlfriend and at the same time threatening her with a knife, but she's still angry about their whole intervention. <laughs> She doesn't want to press charges because she is afraid. She's worried he will go after her when we are not around. Despite the concerns of the cops, for now the woman has forgiven her man. The woman refused to give a statement to the police, but as the officers saw the boyfriend punching her, they had enough evidence to charge him for assault. He's currently awaiting trial. On a routine roadblock to hunt down drink drivers, local police officer Antonio Morales has just stopped an English woman. Although she claims to have had only one glass of wine, she still has to give a breath sample. For years, Spanish cops had the reputation of being lenient on drink driving, but with two and a half thousand people killed every year in accidents triggered by alcohol, the government has now ordered the police to be extra tough. But this woman seems to think she can wriggle herself out of it with some giggly schoolgirl antics. The limit in Spain is 0 0.25. So that's your, that's your, it's 0 0.50. You know what I mean? No, I'm over the limit. So you are out of the limit, yeah, you know, you know. 
Gusto, please. Can you come with us, please? She's twice over the Spanish legal limit of 0.25 milligrams of alcohol in a breath sample. Unknown to many, the Spanish limit is not so lenient at 30% lower than the British one. The cops need to take a second sample with a more accurate breathalyzer. Another cop and another chance to flirt her way out of the situation. Can I sing karaoke instead? <laughs> yes. No, no. Stop it. Please. No, 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 no. Hello. Please. Hi, yeah. So, yeah, no, I've just been pulled over by the police. I'll ring you back in a minute, love. All right. Bye. Take it okay, off. bye. Take it off, yes. Okay. Strong and continue. More, 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 more. A positive result here and the cops will have enough evidence to charge her. Not 0.49, again twice over the legal limit. She's in trouble. She's tried the happy flirty schoolgirl approach, but with the situation getting desperate, it's time to turn on the waterworks. Okay. Sorry, 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 you know, I, I, I sorry your situation, you know, but you know, we are working, you, you understand us. You know? The cops are having none of it. With all attempts failed, she finally shows her true colours. Stop shining my light on me! You know, she tried to put the boobs, you know, a little bit high. She's like, a, hi sir, Do you call, are, are you sure what you're doing? Yeah, sure, we are, we are sure what we're doing. So I don't care how your boobs are or I don't care how your legs are. I don't care how your face or are your attitude. If you are uh, off the limit, you are off the limit, so that's it. Despite her fury, the woman still gets off lightly. She's landed with an on-the-spot fine of 600 euros, that's 400 pounds, and gets her car confiscated until she's sobered up. Back in the UK, being twice above the legal limit would have led to a mandatory driving ban. On the other side of town, officers Manolo and Esteban have had a disturbing call. We are going to a call. Some plain clothes officers are already there. They told us there is a missing 10-year-old girl at the beach. We are going to go and look for her. Over the last 10 years, the Costa del Sol has seen a massive rise in cases of child abduction, and many of the locals blame this on the foreign expats. The family of the Spanish girl are already waiting for the cops. Her brother points out the last place she was seen. Every police unit presently available is ordered to the beach. Those already on scene believe the best strategy is to comb every metre of the area. But the task facing the cops is a daunting one. Their torches light only a narrow strip of the vast darkness to be searched. Mercedes! Mercedes! Officers on foot call the girl's name, hoping she's still nearby, while five patrol cars sweep the two-mile-long beach. Suddenly, the officers hear frantic shouts. It's the missing girl's distraught father. He thinks the cops are searching in the wrong place, even though there are almost 20 of them spread along the beach. The man's in an absolute panic. He's convinced that a gang of foreign kidnappers have snatched his daughter, and he now seems on the edge of collapse. And as there's a chance this could be a kidnapping, a plainclothes cop from a local crime squad has been called in to organize a search for potential traces and evidence. But this isn't helping the dad. The plainclothes cop presence is confirming his worst fears. He's getting more and more hysterical, which isn't helping the cops or his missing daughter. The officers have had enough and get him into the nearest police car before continuing their search. The cops have now been searching for more than 30 minutes. And even officers Manolo and Esteban are getting worried. With the tide coming in, there's also the awful possibility that the girl may have been washed away and drowned. As the all-terrain vehicles continue searching the open spaces, officers on foot search the dense undergrowth of the sand dunes. 
Despite 20 cops scanning every inch of the beach, the girl is still nowhere to be seen. The officers are now seriously worried. Running out of options, they begin to push the search wider. They check one of the locals to see if he's seen anything. Hola. Policía local. ¿Sabéis ya lo que pasa? But it looks like the girl's dad has already asked everyone in the area. Pues estamos buscándola. Aquí dentro no está, ¿no? Still no sighting of the girl, and with the police search exceeding more than 45 minutes, they begin to fear the worst. But suddenly, there's a commotion from further down the beach. Mercedes! Mercedes! It's the girl. At last, they've found her. But the cops are eager to make sure she's unharmed. She seems okay and says it was her dad who wandered off trying out his new metal detector. The dad took his eyes off her just for a minute on the beach. She was waiting for her dad by the deck chairs while he went off with his metal detector. She got scared while waiting and went off to find her mom. Most of us are parents and it really hits home. Twenty police officers have spent almost an hour searching for the girl, but after all the stress, no one's blaming her dad. Everyone's just relieved that his daughter is safe. It's very satisfying when they turn up. It's a happy ending. Happy endings are the best. Yeah, it's a